In this chapter, we're going to talk about network evolution and more specifically about node fitness. We're going to expand upon that Barbashi Albert model that we took a look at a couple of weeks ago. And so thus far, we've been presented with a couple of different pictures of how networks operate and how they evolve. And the first we looked at was the Erdős Renyi model. So in their model, we considered a random network where you have a set of nodes and we have a certain probability that each pair of nodes is going to be connected in the network. And this is a static network, just exists the way it is. There's no growth, no preferential attachment. The next thing we did was we moved to looking at some real world networks, some scale free networks and networks that followed a power law distribution when looking at degree. And in these networks, we started to ask ourselves, well, what happens if we add new nodes to the network? And so Barbashi and Albert proposed this model in which we have a first mover advantage and we have also a rich get richer phenomenon. So they propose a model in which the earlier a node is introduced into the network, the more likely it is to end up with more connections than any other node. And as some of you remarked in your discussion, this model is incomplete in the sense that, of course, there are other factors that contribute to a node's overall degree. And so we could take a look at the following example. When the internet was first widely used, we had search engines like Inktomi and AltaVista, you may or may not remember, but most of us, I don't think, use these anymore. What we found is that Google by 2000 had become actually the biggest hub of the web. But this didn't last either. Actually, in 2011, Facebook, which by even Google standards was fairly young, took over as the web's biggest node. And so if we consider that Barabashi Albert model that said, well, the earlier node enters the playing field, the network, well, the more connections it's going to have, that model really doesn't explain this behavior. Why are these late comers or these later comers, I should say, um, gaining so much traction? Why are they getting so connected on the web? And so we have a couple of explanations for that. And we have an additional model that Barabashi helped develop. So the BA model is minimal. It makes very basic, simplest assumptions of linear growth and linear preferential attachment. And it doesn't capture if there are variations in the shape of the degree distribution or variations in the degree exponent. This is something that we're going to talk about and kind of define a little bit further. Nor does it capture the size independent clustering coefficient. However, we don't want to throw the model completely away. It can actually be adapted to describe most features of real networks. And so that's what we're going to try to do here. And so in order to get an even better picture, we have to incorporate things that actually take place in real networks, like adding links without adding any new nodes. If links get rewired, links get removed. If nodes actually get removed, we haven't talked about that yet. Or if there are certain constraints on the network and what kind of optimization can take place. So, with that, we introduce the Bianconi Barabashi model. So the question we're asking here is, can latecomers to the network make it? Do we only see the first mover advantage? We have the scale free model that we looked at last time. And basically we said, well, everybody gains connections at the same rate. That's the assumption. And so all you need to be is first in line and Regardless, you will have the most connections. That's what our model from a couple weeks ago, the Barbashi Albert model was saying. We're gonna make a revision to that and talk about this idea of node fitness. And so when we consider node fitness, we can see that actually a node's eventual degree depends on both 
when it enters the network, as well as fitness. So we might have a case where like this red line indicates that a latecomer to the network actually takes over as being the most influential. And so the question is, what is fitness and how do we characterize it? So in this new model, Bianconi Barabashi, what we introduce is this concept of fitness. So every time a node, a new node enters the network, we have a random number that's chosen from a fitness distribution for that node. And once it's assigned, a node's fitness doesn't change. So you can debate whether or not you think that's uh, a proper way of describing a real world network, but for the sake of the model, we assume that the node's fitness doesn't change. And to characterize preferential attachment in such a network, we say that the probability that a link of a new node connects to a node in the network is proportional to the node degree multiplied by its fitness. And so what that means is that the higher the fitness of the node, the greater the probability that a new node is going to connect to that node. And so here we can see an evolving network where we have a node of high fitness. So as it's gone along, you can actually see that a later comer, uh, node five, is actually gaining more new links than node one eventually does. And the same is true of node three. So these two nodes in the network have very high fitness when they're introduced. And so if you'd like to go through the statistics in the textbook, you can. But the takeaway here is that we talk about the Barabashi Albert model. We're taking a look at first mover advantage. So we assume that all fitnesses are equal. And the sooner that a node in the network enters, we can assume that it will get richer. Contrast that with this Bianconi Barabashi model, we actually have a fit gets richer phenomenon. And so we might have a case where a node that enters later actually overtakes nodes that were first movers in the network. And I'm sure that you can think of examples just like Facebook and Google that did this in real world networks. And you can also probably characterize why that might have happened, what actually contributed to their fitness. So actually, it's Barabashi's textbook, and what he's doing here is characterizing the fitness of his own scientific publication. The paper that was talking about scaling and random networks, he's pointing out here that while the paper that described the sequence of the human genome uh, started off looking like it was going to have higher fitness, uh, that his own paper actually overtook it. And so his point here, don't worry so much about the mathematics here. His point is that you can't really truly know what the ultimate impact or importance of a node is in that network, in that network until you've tracked it for a while. And I think if you think about this, this is true in real world cases. We can make all kinds of predictions and a lot of the times they're accurate and a lot of the times they're not accurate. We really don't know until we see the behavior. Now that's not necessarily as useful if you're in the business of making predictions, but it's the truth. And we hope that we can learn from this kind of behavior, I guess, to make new predictions in the world of analytics. So the piece in your textbook that I had you skip, and you're welcome to read it if you like, it's describing a way in which network behavior can actually be characterized by Bose-Einstein condensation. Um, and so this is a concept in physics, if you look at the textbook. So in the book, it describes how the fitness of a node can be mapped energy, the links in a network to particles, and the nodes to different energy levels. And the long and short of it is that often what we see in a network is that you'll have one node that kind of takes over uh, and just kind of overtakes the network with links, becomes very, very influential. And I think we see that with Windows 
in terms of market share, if you want to talk about operating systems. And if you want to look into the details of it, again, you're welcome to. I'm not going to require that um, for this course, but it is kind of interesting. And I think it's an apt comparison if you want to take a look at it. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about how networks evolved. So far, we've just talked about growth and preferential attachment. And again, that was, so we add nodes to the network. Now we've introduced this concept of fitness, that every time we add a node to the network, it has a fitness. Um, and we also have preferential attachment. But of course, now we see that it's influenced by fitness as well. So what other types of network evolution are there? Most real world networks experience some kind of aging. So in your textbook, you can see they have the example of, you know, an actor network, actors age, and they won't act in as many films. And eventually they won't act in any films. And so to characterize this, we have node deletion. Eventually nodes may be removed from a network. So first what we have is we're in that scale free zone. We're removing nodes, but we don't really notice because New nodes are being added at a high enough rate that we don't actually notice any deletion. So we're still scale free, still have that power law. When it happens that the number of nodes being removed is equal to the number of nodes being added to the network, we enter what's called the exponential. And so we lose the scale free property. Eventually it'll happen that we're actually removing more nodes than we're adding, and then we'll be having a declining network. And eventually we won't have connected network at all. And so you can see the different types of distributions for degree that we would have for each kind of network. And Barabashi does a nice job of mapping this to phase transitions, like we did when we were talking about adding connections in the network. And so the main thing that I want you to take away is we have scale free, then we end up with exponential, and then finally we have a uh, declining network. So we actually have, when we're declining in the network, we see preferential attachment in reverse. As we start removing nodes, we re remove links as well, and we actually see a weak gets weaker phenomenon. So the less connected nodes are actually more likely to lose links in the network as well. So in summary, we have introduced a new model the Bianconi Barbashi model that characterizes node fitness. And they say, hey, when a node enters a network, let's just assign it a random level of fitness. And now we're gonna say that as the network continues to grow, that when nodes get more connections, that depends on their fitness as well as when they entered the network. And actually the higher the fitness, the higher the rate at which they will acquire additional connections. So instead of just first mover advantage, we now have a fit gets richer phenomenon. And you can kind of debate what ends up defining fitness. There's a lot of different factors. We also stated that you really can't understand a node's fitness truly until you actually observe its behavior for a long period of time. That's the best way to get ground truth. And then we took a look at how networks evolve, how they decline as well and the different stages of decline. So from here, what you'll want to be able to do is think about real world examples of nodes and networks that weren't first movers, but became very influential and why, what, what characterized their fitness and what made them so successful. And so you should be able to use that in your discussion for this week.